We're believing that the best is yet to come. This is taken out of Matthew chapter 8, verse 13. It says, when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lays at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I'm under a man under authority, right? Having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said, I have not heard, seen, sound, found so great a faith. No, not in Israel. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Father, we thank you for this time that we have together. We thank you, God, that just speaking the word only accomplishes the will of the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. So few today have such a great faith as that centurion. If they have someone sick in their house and Jesus should come and say to them, I will come to your house and heal him, they would say, that is just exactly what I want you to do. <laughs> this is a very special case. And that is what it will take. How many of you know you would want Jesus to come to your house just to keep you company because you're locked up in there. And the centurion in this account had more faith than that. He said, you don't have to come to my house. Although Jesus was willing to do this, to come to this man's house, for God's word records that he said, I will go. The centurion had so much faith that he said, you don't have to come to my house. All that you need to do is to heal my servant. Speak the word only. And he is going to be healed instantly. The split second he said, speak the word only, I believe his servant was healed. If all Jesus had to do in days long ago was to speak the word and someone a long way off was healed instantly, all Jesus has to do today is speak the word. I mean, do you believe that? Do you believe that? Would you believe me if I told you right now that you were going to hear the voice of God and that God was going to speak the word to you and heal you? Do you want to hear the voice of God? Do you want to hear Jesus say, it is done? Jesus commended this centurion and said that he had not found such faith in all, in all of Israel. Alone among the thousands who clamored to him for their healing, this man realized the meaning of Christ's authority by faith. He understood that even as his, his authority as a centurion made it possible for him to give a command with full assurance that command would be obeyed. So Christ's authority as the son of God made it possible for him to simply give a command and sickness had to flee. Seeing such faith, Jesus knew that all that was needed was to say, go thy way, thy servant is healed. And having spoken, it should be so. If I were to say to you, go your way, your sick loved one, your sick friend is healed, would you turn around? Would you believe me wherever you are right now and go to that person expecting to find him or her healed when you got there? I'm telling you, if you can believe right now that Jesus has spoken the word and that that is enough, you will be healed. Your loved one will be healed. The cancer will go. The dementia will go. The tumor will vanish. Heart trouble will go away. Diabetes will be gone. Epilepsy, epilepsy, cataracts, whatever it is, will be completely gone. And you will be completely whole. Just say, speak the word only. Speak the word only, Lord. I'm going to say amen if you're getting this. I want to tell you another one. Wilt thou be made whole? Out of John chapter 5, a man laid beside the pool of Bethesda. 
He laid there for 38 years long, totally helpless. And the story is recorded in the Bible that a certain season, an angel went down, troubled the waters, and the first one that was put into the water after the angel troubled it was made whole. God has always provided healing for his people in some form or fashion. So Jesus one day went to this pool. There, the Bible declares a multitude of people were waiting for the troubling of the water, the halt, the maimed, the crippled. And Jesus saw this man lying there on his bed where he had laid for, as I said, 38 years. And Jesus says to him, wilt thou be made whole? Jesus was ready to what? Speak the word and make him whole. But do you remember what he said? He said, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Here, <laughs> here was the man standing by his side who was able to make him whole with a word. And he failed to recognize God's method of bringing him healing. Thousands today, listen, thousands today don't even recognize who Jesus is when he stands by and at their side, waiting to speak the word and to set them free. For 38 years, the man had waited there, right there, beside the pool, trying to find a way to get in. Some people have their eyes on a preacher or a prayer or a handkerchief, They're waiting on a prayer line. When the question is, wilt thou be made whole? Will you be made whole? Some reply, I've been prayed for so many times. Brother this or sister so-and-so pray for me. And still, I only grow worse. I have, I have been prayed for by every evangelist, healing evangelist in the country. But this is a hard case. Mine is a hard case. There are so many things wrong with me. Just let me tell you all about it. And Jesus stands waiting to speak the word only. Today I'm telling you, believe him. Rest on his word. We which have believed do enter into rest, Hebrews 4.3. Jesus was standing there by the pool waiting and wanting to speak the word that would make that man whole. Do you know what happened? Jesus spoke a few words. He says, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Gather your things. Get up, gather your things, and start walking. Immediately, that man was made whole. He picked up that bed upon which he had been lying for 38 years and began running with it. And Jesus didn't even touch him. He didn't pray a prayer. All he did was speak the word. The power of God went through that man and made him completely whole. He didn't have a prayer card. He didn't have a prayer line. He didn't have a healing line. Nobody touched him. He wasn't anointed with oil. No one dropped him into the pool. He, he, Jesus broke all tradition. Jesus just spoke the word. And after 38 years of suffering, this man was healed instantly. And I'm telling you tonight, you can be healed right now. All you have to do is invite Jesus to speak. Speak the word. You just raise your, raise, raise, raise your right hand with me. Right? Raise it now. Just say, Father, Jesus, speak the word only. Speak the word only. Believe that he does it. Believe that he does it. Hear me. Jesus speaks the word and you are made whole. So many people like this man at the pool of Bethesda begin to find excuses for not being healed when, when all the time Jesus is standing by right there desiring to speak the word that would heal them. Jesus is in your house right now ready to just speak the word so you can be made whole. How many of you will receive that tonight? I got another one. This is out of John chapter 4, verses 46 through 53. There came a nobleman to Jesus, whose son was sick with a raging fever. He besought Jesus that he would come down to his house and, and heal his son. And Jesus merely said, go thy way. Thy son lives. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. 
and he went his way. That man knew his son was dying with a raging fever, but he also knew that if Jesus spoke the word, his son would be healed. What happened? When, when, when he believed the word that Jesus spoke, his son was healed. As the man was on the way home, one of his servants met him and said, thy son liveth. And he asked the servant, his servant, when? When his son, when did his son begin to amend, to begin to heal? And when the servant told him, he knew that it was the same hour when Jesus had said unto him, thy son liveth. Again, I'm telling you, Jesus speaks the word today. Some bound by doubt and skepticism, they may say, you don't really believe that Jesus is going to speak such words in this day, do you? And if I didn't believe that Jesus would speak a word today, I wouldn't be wasting my time right now and asking you to come into a, a virtual healing room. But I'm not wasting my time, and neither are you. You are here, and Jesus is here, and Jesus does still speak the word today. Just as he spoke the word for the centurion servant, just as he spoke the word to the man who was laying beside the pool, at the pool of Bethesda, for 38 years, just as he spoke the word for this nobleman's son and made him whole. Jesus will speak the word right now that will make you whole. Just believe it. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Can you believe it? Yes, Lord, we believe your promises, that they are yes and amen. Let's keep going. Here's another one. Because God will speak through people. First Kings. Chapter 17, verse 16, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he, the Lord, spake by Elijah. That little widow woman could have said, ah, that is just that old bald-headed preacher, but she didn't. You know he was bald. And she realized that it was God speaking through his servant that it was not just Elijah speaking, but God speaking to her through him. And she had prayed to God to help her and her son in their distress. And God spoke to her through Elijah to bring deliverance. And he said to her, make me a little cake first, then go back and make for thee and thy son. It wasn't Elijah speaking. That was the word of the Lord to her. That was God speaking through him. And she believed and obeyed, and God met her need. God still speaks through men and women today. Do you believe that? He still speaks through men and women that will yield to his moving. God has made many, many ways of speaking to us. Sometimes he speaks audibly. Other times it may be in 1 Kings Chapter 19, verse 12, a still, small voice. And we'll, we'll hear it in the inside of us. And we can hear when we're just reading the word, God is talking to us. We, we read that he spoke audibly to some, and, and his voice sounded like thunder. All the way through the Bible, God has called to his people and spoken to them with an audible voice. In, in Leviticus 1, 1, Exodus 3, 4, and 5, in Exodus 19, Verse 3, he called unto Moses and said unto him. In Joshua 1.1, 1, 1, he spake, God spake unto Joshua, saying, in Numbers 12.5, the Lord called Aaron and Miriam. He called them. Here in 1 Kings 17, verse 15, God spoke through a man according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. It was Elijah's lips. It was his voice. But it was God speaking through his voice. And Elijah was a man subject to like passions. What? James says, 517, as we are. As we are. God still speaks. God still speaks through his ministers today. If you haven't lost confidence in the ministry, in the church, in the people, in the, in the men and women of God, you will not have confidence if you have lost confidence. You will not have confidence in God either. That's exactly that's exactly why some of you are not able to get anything from God. 
You have to have confidence in the one that's praying for you as well. If you believe me, every one of you can hear the voice of God right now, and God will do mighty things for you. Ten men. Ten men met Jesus. Every one of them was a leper, and Jesus was the only one who could help them. But they dared not even come close to Jesus to touch him. He didn't even pray one prayer for them. He didn't say, come and I will lay my hands on you. He said, go, show yourself to the priest. As they went, they were cleansed. Luke 17, 11 through 19. As they went, they were cleansed. What about the Syrophoenician mother? She came to Jesus and her daughter was grievously vexed, the Bible says, with the devil. No doubt she would have liked to bring her daughter to Jesus, but she couldn't. Nevertheless, she believed that if she could just get close enough to talk to Jesus about her daughter, that she would be delivered. And Jesus didn't say, have someone bring her to me, get an ambulance, bring her to me, whatever. He didn't even say, I'll go there and heal her. Jesus commended her for her faith and saying, be it unto thee as you will, as thou wilt. King James says, I, I can see your daughter just running to meet her mom as she returns home sound, free, and delivered. And what made her whole? The words that Jesus spoke. And God is still the same today. He speaks the words of health and healing. I'll tell you what makes Jesus speak the word of healing today. I pray, you pray, we agree without doubting, and God in heaven forms that third angle of the triangle when two of us agree is touching anything. He gets in there and makes it a, the, the third triangle, the third angle in the triangle. Jesus speaks the word and says, it's done. It's done. And Jesus says in the Bible, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Matthew 18, 18. But it takes two of us in harmony. That's a, that's a scripture about community. It takes two of us, minimum, in harmony and in accord with the real living true faith, without a doubt, to move God so he will say, it is done. I believe that God is speaking the word today for you. He spoke the word for the centurion servant. He spoke the word for the man at the pool of Bethesda. He spoke the word for the nobleman's son and the Syrophoenician woman's daughter. He spoke the word for the starving widow and her son. He spoke the word for the 10 lepers. He is speaking today for men and women just like you every day. What is your need? That's why we're here. All you have to do is say, Speak the word only, Father. Speak the word only. His word spoken in heaven will loose you, will loose your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, whatever it is you are contending with. Speak the word only. Do you believe? Speak the word only. It is his word. There is life and healing in his word. In Isaiah 53, 4, he says, surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. In Matthew 8, 17, he says, himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Isaiah 53, 5, we know it well. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, what? And with his stripes, we are healed. That's the word of God. That's God's word. If Jesus says you are healed, who can say you're not? If, if Jesus says you're healed, who can say you're not? If he says you're healed, you can't make him out to be a liar unless you say you're not. So I believe what Jesus said. I believe what Jesus said. Speak the word only. Father, we raise our hands towards heaven right now. And we want to tell you that it, we believe that it is done. We believe that healing is ours, that it is done. That health, healing, deliverance, our miracle is ours right now in Jesus name in Jesus name somebody say it's mine right now it's mine right now